Today we're going to give you three quick tips about our hydraulic systems. We had a different video planned for today. It was a <laughs> review, but sometimes, you know, things don't come together the way we think they're going to. Yep, things don't always go according to our plans when it comes to editing videos, and sometimes they take longer than we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. So today, like he said, we just wanted to give you some, some useful information. And these are questions that we've been asked a couple of times, and they have to do with our hydraulic systems. We've got two hydraulic systems. One of them is for our main slides here and here. The other one is for our leveling jacks. So the first tip that we're going to talk about has to do with the hydraulic leveling system. It's an issue that is pretty common on these systems. We see it all the time. In fact, we, it actually happened to us within the first week of having the RV. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it was kind of freaky because we didn't know what was going on. That's right. So what it is is the hydraulics will pop. They'll make a big like poof. And it's, it's typically, scary when it first <laughs> happens too. It's typically accompanied by a shaking of the rig, yeah. which isn't fun either when you're brand new in an RV and you're like, holy crap, what's that? Like, what just broke? <laughs> Something is really, Something bad. really wrong. But most of the time it's very easy to take care of it. That's right. So all you have to do to remedy this situation is pull out a quart of hydraulic fluid and put in a quart of what's called anti-stiction fluid. Sometimes it's called hydraulic fluid. I will put a link below to the three types that LCI recommends. This is one of the recommended treatments. There are two others that I'll, that I'll put in the link, but pretty simple. But basically it's some kind of treatment for the hydraulic fluid that makes it so it doesn't slip and pop and do that funky thing. Yep. You're going to need to take a quart out before you put a quart in so you don't go over the maximum level. And it's been over a year since we did it and we may need to do it again. Yeah, we've been getting some strange popping again lately, so I think yeah. we're going to do it. We're going to use the deluxe siphon hose. Can you tell how fancy that deluxe siphon hose is? Clearly this is the deluxe version. Clearly. It's got the comfort grip. Oh, <laughs> you gotta have the comfort grip. So we're gonna use this to uh, siphon off into this some hydraulic fluid, which we will uh, dispose of in an environmental fashion, which we will figure out what that is later. All right, so we have the quart of hydraulic fluid out, quart of additive in cap back on. So now we're supposed to cycle the jacks a few times. And it does tend to happen more in cold weather, I think, as the weather is cooling down and from the warmth of the day and cooling, I don't know. Because we're in the desert. I'm not a hydraulic expert, <laughs> but I know how to put a quart of oil in something. Right, so the first time that we did it, we didn't have any popping noises after that for, gosh, I guess a good year, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it seems to work. Yep. So what's quick tip number two? Number two tip is also to do with the leveling hydraulic systems. I've been asked fairly often and recently about when they saw our pictures of us boondocking and we're still hitched up, do we put our jacks down? Do we still level? And the answer is yes and no. We don't auto level because I don't trust the auto level system right. to do its thing while we're hitched up. Right. The key is I don't want there to be negative pressure on the hitch. Mm -hmm. I don't want the rig trying to lift the truck. I don't think it would go that far, but also typically the way the auto level system works is it goes nose down first and then comes back up and levels itself that way and it can't go nose down when it's on the hitch. So I do it manually and it's really pretty simple. You can do it on the one control panel in here, but that means you got to be inside and I don't like leveling and shaking the thing while we're inside. Oh, I've been in here when he does some leveling and it's freaky. So I do it on the app. Do, 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 do and put a code in, top secret. One, two, three, four. No, what's not in. And then in here, we have leveling. And this has a whole lot of information on it. One thing I can do here is I can go to info. I can see that we are 0.2 degrees negative front rear and our side to side is off by 0.1 degree. But that's not what I'm concerned about. I can go into manual mode and hit enter. And then what I can do is I can pick whether I want to extend or retract, and then I pick front, back, left, or right. What I will typically do is I'll use the control panel outside to put the front jacks down just to the ground. And 
and then I'll use this. It'll tell you right on the screen how far you're off, positive, negative, each way. And really all I do is I put the jacks down and I just kind of go both directions until I see all six jacks are down. And then I get it as level as possible. If you're already pretty level, you shouldn't have to do much. In fact, we've stayed overnight without putting the jacks down at all. But we just like the stability of having the jacks down. That's true. And it's not going to hurt anything as long as you don't do anything stupid, like try to lift your truck off the ground. Or if you're on an angle like this, and then you got to crank it over like this, just leave it. Don't do yeah. it. Matter of fact, don't even stay there. Go somewhere where it's level, more level. Right. And usually, like you said, it's only for a night. Yeah. The third tip. Third tip is probably the one we use the most. Yes. It's definitely the one we use the most. A lot of RVs, especially fifth wheels and travel trailers, maybe some class A's, I don't really know, but the side slides, the main slides, our big one for the living room and this one for the kitchen, are tied together. So you push the thing out and one side goes out and then the other side goes out and you're, and you're done. And the question becomes, what if I want to put just one slide out? And we do this every time we set up now because she wants to start getting set up inside, mm -hmm. but I want to get the poop hose hooked up and hooking up the poop hose with the kitchen slide out is difficult because I got to crawl under it. So what we do is we lock down this one and open up that one. And basically the way that's done is in ours, up underneath by our propane tanks, we've got two valves. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, you close the valve of the slide you don't want to move. Pretty simple, you're mm -hmm. just disconnecting that slide's hydraulic. It's hydraulics. Hydraulics. <laughs> Hydraulics. <laughs> you have to play around to see which one does what. You basically have to play around to see which one does what. I know that for ours, this side is that side, and this side is that side. You just learn that by trial and error. Lock one down, run your slides, see which one stays, see which one moves, and then you'll know, maybe label them. It's also come in handy when we get somewhere and our pantry door has come open mm -hmm. during travel. And instead of what we used to do, which is climb over the island and it's not comfortable or that easy to shut the pantry door, now we can just do the one side yeah. and it's easy. So I need to close the valve for that side because our pantry door opened while we were traveling. And that was one of the problems we had when we first got started was opening our slide. It catches the door, it crunches stuff. And now I'll just operate the slide normally, which is right here. And now normally when I push this, that slide would go out first, but since I have that valve closed, you can see it's working our main slide first. So then we can come over here and solve the problem. Now I can go open the valve and we can put that one out. And there you have it. This slide always works first. So you, you put the slides out, you can't get around this island without right. that slide out. So and we learned our lesson the hard way the very first time when the door kind of cracked and, and pulled off a little bit. So yeah. we don't do that anymore. We've got a little bit of damage down there. Also when you're doing this or when you're operating your slides in general, you want to always cycle them all the way in and all the way out. You don't want to go in part way and then out and then in and out and out. You can get things out of alignment particularly with the Schwintech slides, which our bedroom has, it's a little screw drive thing, and those are particularly sensitive to um, not running them in all the way in and out because things can get out of whack, and then one side goes out before the other, and you don't, yeah, it's, it's, it messes up. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Bonus tip on the hydraulics, there is also another issue that rears its ugly head, typically at the worst time, there is a 50 amp slow blow fuse that many times will give out and then you're stuck without your slides working until you get the fuse replaced. So we've been carrying around a, a couple of spares just because I like to have that stuff on hand. And I also just picked up this. It's a, what a lot of people in the forums recommend. It's an 80 amp quick reset. So you can just reset it. So I've got this on hand in case we ever run into that problem. I will have the part to fix it on the spot. Always be prepared. A, B, P. <laughs> Bonus tip. One thing we get asked quite a bit about in our videos is you'll see in, in a lot of them we've got red or black cans under here. Well, those are Anderson jack blocks 
and we've broken nine out of ten because they replaced four of them and they were all crushed at various locations. We have since switched to RV snap pads. These things right here, they are solid. They give you quite a bit more footprint and they're a very, very hard solid rubber and they pop right on, you leave them on. You don't have to worry about putting stuff under here when you put the jacks down, you just put them down. Now one of the benefits of the jack blocks was that they lessen your jack extension and thereby give you a little bit more stability. RV Snap Pads is also coming out with a solution to that that integrates with the RV Snap Pads. So you'll have the best of both worlds. When you want to lessen that jack extension, you can put them on and when you don't, you can take them off. We don't know exactly what they look like yet because they're not out but they are going to be working with us to prototype those. And as soon as they come out, we'll have a video on those. But for right now, we do not recommend the Anderson Jack Blocks. They break very easily. These snap pads, we do have a 10% discount we can give you on those. Link will be below in the description. So that's it. Those are our quick tips about our hydraulic systems. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the like button, that helps us. We really do appreciate it. It really does. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you guys next week. And check out our website, changinglanesrv.com. That's it, that's all we have to say. That's it.